The Met Gala looks were different this year, in the respect that they weren't very different. Generally, when I think of Met Gala looks, I think of very grand, sometimes outlandish costumes. This year it was mostly characterized by simple looks, either replicas of old pieces or reinterpretations of old pieces. Even so, there were a few outfits that I rather liked and possibly wished to recreate, but one look. One look in particular stood out to me, and that was Amanda Seyfried. Her outfit was fine. Not my favorite. But it wasn't the outfit my gaze locked on. It was her hair. Her hair was gorgeous. I have been having a bit of struggle, a war really, with my hair lately, and I have tried to achieve that look several times without success. But I am inspired to go for it again. I'm trying sponge curlers. I'm going to see if this works. Not quite. I think for her hair, they probably used a waver and a bunch of hairspray, and I don't have either of those. I've got a lot to figure out with hair. But hey, I'm trying, right? This was kind of the look I wanted to go for, for the reveal on my last video, though. And I already posted that. Although... There might be a way. business is out of the way, let's get back to the subject of the Met Gala. I think this look stood out to a lot of people, as it did me, and I did consider making an exact replica of the dress, but quickly realized that there was no way I could do that because there's actually a lot of dress here and a lot of detail, and it would take so much time and so many dollars, and I just didn't feel like it would be worth it to not eat or sleep for a couple of weeks. So I had either a brilliant idea or a rather ridiculous one, but you know it's amazing how often those two threads coincide. The idea was to make Doja Cat's Met Gala look, but make it 20s. And I could make up my own pattern and instructions, but lately I'm trying to live by the wise old proverb that says, work smarter, not harder. So I'm going to borrow from this tutorial by Macrelia Tours. It's gonna be 20 steamed. Get one yard of some comfy, stretchy flesh. Colored fabric. I should probably watch the tutorial in full before starting to follow the steps. So it was time to go shopping. This flesh colored stretch knit I already happened to have on hand, so that was cool. I cut out the basic shape and added some darts. Then I set to work on the turban. I have made a turban before, loved it, patterned it, and I could not find the pattern. So I just went ahead and gave a piece of fabric a wolf cut. Or is it a unicorn cut? Butterfly cut? Is that a thing? I don't know. Anyway, I just hacked it, straightened it up a bit, and it turned out looking pretty decent, so I cut the same shape out of the turtleneck and some cream stretch knit I also had on hand. I layered the pieces together, making a lining and an outer fabric. I stitched those pieces together separately and then joined them together along the edges, leaving a small space open so I could turn it inside out. Then it was time to make the ears. I just cut out what I thought might look like cat ear shapes. I cut out several layers, some fabric, and some really sturdy interfacing. I layered them, stitched them together, and turned them inside out. I wasn't confident that they were looking quite like cat ears, so I decided to consult a professional. The consensus was they were good enough. I determined the best way to insert the ears would be to make an incision, stick the ear in, and then sew across. And I think it turned out pretty good, and now I am moderately obsessed with the idea of putting cat ears on absolutely every headpiece I own. 
I then set to work disassembling the skirt. So, it's been a while since I last worked on this project. And by a while, I mean 18 days. I have not worked on this project because of reasons. But I'm going to dive back into it today and I'm going to finish it today. Probably not. I did indeed dive right back in. Using the flesh colored pieces as patterns, I cut duplicates out of the lining of the skirt and the chiffon overlayer. I stitched up all the sides and shoulder seams and joined them together at the neckline, then flipped it inside out. I tried it on, it fits me just barely, but it fits me. Sad thing is, is a dress form is not as squishy as a human body, so I cannot get it over the dress form, which is sad because I kind of needed it for this next step. The next step is, French. I have no idea if this is gonna work. I found these at the thrift store and I thought, hey, I could cut up all these little pieces and create fringe. That's beginning to sound ridiculous right now. I just wanna sew this directly to the dress, which is why it not being on the dress form is gonna be a problem because that was how I was going to put it on nice and smooth and even. Um, so I don't know how this is gonna go. So we have a slight problem. I really thought I would have enough to make so much fringe. And now I'm thinking there's, there's not enough here. So either I abandon this whole plan or I mix in some of the cream. I think it looks pretty good when it's mixed into the white. You can't really tell. Maybe that'll add some dimension. Yeah, let's go for it. I attached some double-sided tape onto the paper and then I stuck each little string onto the tape. I just ended up pinning the shoulders of the dress to the shoulders of the dress form. At this point, I wasn't super pleased, but I was working with what I had, so I was fine with it. The only thing I wasn't fine with was the length of the dress. I thought that if it had a little bit longer of a hem, the fringe would show up better, so I needed to add a section at the bottom. The problem was this was all the fabric that I had left over, so I had to dig into my stash to see if I had anything that would work. And this is what I came up with. I just used the dull side, the wrong side, of the satin fabric. Okay, I've got it pinned up on the dress form. It already has a makeup stain on it. Oh well. I don't love it, but I think it does look better. It is now time to embellish. This is what I have for that. I purchased this for a previous project, which will not be named. We do not speak of said project. I was going to return it because it is fairly expensive, but the store where it came from is also very far away. So I would be spending my time and gas money. So I did not return it. So hopefully it will work for this project because I am not hand beating this dress. My respect goes to everyone who hand beaded her dress. I ain't doing it. I also have this. I do not know when or where, no idea. It was just in my cupboard. It's dimensional fabric paint. I was thinking that I could use this to make fake beads, faux beads, if you will, because I know that this does not go very far. So I was thinking fake beads and then spray this over top. I'm probably going to have to do a swatch that's a really good idea. I rigged up this doohickey, patent pending, because I do not want to lay this flat, spray paint it, wait for it to dry, turn it over, spray paint it, especially because it might crease funny. It's not going to be ideal to lay it flat. I started making my faux beads on the very bottom as a sort of practice run where the fringe would cover it so if it was bad, it wouldn't be such a terrible thing. I thought it looked decent, and I felt a bit more confident in how to apply the paint, so I moved on to the turban. I also
also found these. I was thinking that it would be really cool to incorporate some iridescent glitteriness into the project along with the silver. And I had this memory of having bought some. And so I dug into my paint stash and I did. It does not look as good on camera as it does in person. That's too bad. Oh well. But this is my stopping point for the evening and tomorrow I'm gonna spray it with the glitter spray paint. While that was drying, I set to work on the forehead decoration. I used a necklace I found at the thrift store, also some jewelry making supplies that I purchased when I thought jewelry making was going to be my thing. super happy with how everything turned out, but that's okay. I think my favorite part was the turban. Was it the best use of my time? Not necessarily, but if there is anything that you or I get out of this video, I hope it is the reminder that it is okay to do something that other people might deem as silly or a waste of time. Life is really hard, and it is a good thing to be able to momentarily take a break and do something that you enjoy. Even if it feels silly, even if other people tell you it is silly, if it helps you to experience joy, then it is important. If you enjoyed this video, please do click the button that looks kind of like this, and consider clicking the button that says subscribe. Ta-ta! Glitter is getting all over the floor. Peachy.